All right, the last two exercises we're going to demonstrate for you are, um, are teapots with um, weight and a kettlebell swing. And we're going to start with Chloe and the weighted teapots. All right, so in our dynamic warm-up, we did our teapots. So all of you should be fairly familiar with those. We're on the single leg, coming back, touching the ground, and coming all the way back up. This is another exercise that's very good for training the posterior chain. Our glutes, our hamstrings, and our low back are very, very active during this exercise. The difference here is that, of course, we're going to have weights. We want to set up with our foot that we're going to be using to balance on in between the weights. We're going to reach over, grab the dumbbells, pick them off the floor. During this exercise, just like when you're doing your dynamic warm-up, we want to make sure that we're touching the ground with our hands. This time, we're touching the ground with the weights. So we're going to have our prep, come down, touch, and come back up. This is a very key balance exercise, as well as strengthening. Now you can just switch legs with this one easily, so that you can swap legs and come down and come back up. And that's how I do a weighted teapot. Awesome. Let's go on the kettlebell swings. Jackie is going to demonstrate kettlebell swings for you guys. So now kettlebell swings, if you actually bring one of those 10 pound dumbbells back over. Sorry, just one. Kettlebell swings are a very good dynamic exercise that works on explosive hips and also incorporating our upper extremity into it as well. Many gyms now that you may be going to will have kettlebells. We suggest that you use a kettlebell that is appropriate size for you, meaning weight. Um, we will prescribe weights in our workouts as far as what we would like you to use, but if you're uncomfortable using the weight, then go down a little bit with it. Now, we want to talk about proper kettlebell grip. Proper kettlebell grip is two hands on, side by side. Okay? We want to make sure that we have a good, strong grip on the kettlebell and that it's not going to fly out of our hands at any point. So, we want to prep our body just like we're doing a squat. So the kettlebell is sitting nice and low. We're going to take and we're going to drop our hips back. Jackie's in the perfect position right now. We want to make sure that the kettlebell at all times, whenever it is swinging, it's passing above our knees but below our hips. So in this region right between your legs, right where the kettlebell is. You do not want to see the kettlebell dropping below your knees, so bend over more. You don't want to be swinging down here, below your knees. You want to keep a little more of an upright torso. So if we were just to have her bring her back into the good position, we want to have her stay here and just stand up. And you can see it's a very quick position to go from here to up. So we're not, if we're going too far down, we're bending over too much and incorporating too much of our low back, which could cause injury. Now what we're looking for here, a lot of people think kettlebell swings are a lot of arms and shoulders. In fact, your arms are only there to hold the kettlebell to your body. And what you should actually be doing is getting a lot of force from your hips and from your core to swing the kettlebell. A lot of times in physics courses you talk about centrifugal force. It's very similar to this. You're pushing the bell as hard as you can outward and it takes an arc path up above the, um, your body and then it will come back down in a controlled manner. So we have two standards that we're looking for. We want to have an eye level standard, which means that the kettlebell comes to where you're looking directly at it. And we'll have an overhead standard, where the kettlebell is held completely overhead with the bottom facing the ceiling and then coming back down. Early on, we'll use the eye standard. So we're going to have her perform one kettlebell swing, come up, and then down. Now, it's always good to make sure that when you're coming down, you soften those hips to get ready to do another one, even if you're not getting ready to, because that softening of the hips helps to diminish some of that load. So we're going to have her do three for that eye level standard, coming up and down and up down, good. And every time the kettlebell is falling right back between her legs, above her knees and not below. So you can go ahead and stand up normally. Now whenever we're doing this, again, you want to make sure you have a good firm grip on the kettlebell and that you're not facing anyone that you may slip the kettlebell out of your hands and cause damage to a piece of equipment or a person. So now we're going to show how to do that overhead standard. So this time, it's the only difference between the eye level standard and the overhead standard is that we're doing more explosive movement and more force being applied to the kettlebell. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be in the exact same position, and she's going to explode higher and bring the kettlebell overhead. Good, and then relax it down. Good, and then overhead. Good, just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give Jackie a little bit of your kettlebell. <laughs> kind of show the, yeah, the dynamic movement from the hips. A light kettlebell a lot of times can be forced up with the arms, but a heavy kettlebell must be used with proper form. So we're going to have her set up, and she gives two kettlebell swings overhead. Good, and you see the difference. She actually has to explode up with her hips and control the bell on the way down. 
ahead and set that down. If you do not have access to kettlebells at your gym or facility, you can do kettlebell swings with a dumbbell. Now what it is, is they call a hand over hand grip. So you'll grab the kettlebell, and usually with your dominant hand, you'll be a little more powerful. Whatever size kettlebell you normally use, try and use a similar size dumbbell. Okay, one hand on top, other hand right over top of it just like this. So you want to make sure that you have a good firm grip with the second hand just as much as you do with the first hand. All right, we're going to set up just the same with our feet shoulder width apart, coming down and exploding up. Just the same, but using a dumbbell. Thanks, Grayson. Yay.